So welcome to the Great Strides Breakout Session. We have a really um, awesome session set up for you guys today because I think it might be the first time ever that we have 90 minutes. Usually it's like we're cramming it in 45 minutes. So um, we're going to do something pretty cool. The first half is going to be a, um, a panel that we're going to talk about recruiting family teams and national family teams. They're going to go for the first half. Then the second half, we're going to talk about how do we get our walkers fundraising. Y'all heard the goal they just put out for us for this year. $41 million. <laughs> Woo! We got some work to do. That's what that means. We got some work to do. So we need to get those walkers fundraising. We need some new teams. And we're going to hopefully help you guys figure out how to do that today. So we'll get started. I am um, supposed to advance the slide to say Pam Baker. I am Pam Baker. Um, and I, um, I have four kids, two of whom have cystic fibrosis. Gavin is 17 and Jake is 14. Um, they were diagnosed in 2002 at the same time, basically. My oldest was diagnosed um, when he was two and a half. I was six months pregnant with Jake and um, got an amnio and found out that he had CF as well. So that was February and March. Next thing coming up was Great Strides. I had never fundraised. I had never done anything like that. But um, I think like most of the people that come to VLC, I wanted to make a difference feel like it was all for some bigger purpose and um, kind of take power back. So we jumped right on the Great Strides train, named ourselves the Baker Boys Battalion because we knew that we were about to go to war and we were going to recruit all the Army members we could because we, we needed to fight this battle. So that was 2002, like I said, and uh, we haven't missed a Great Strides since. And um, we've changed our fundraising tactics over the year, and we're gonna over the years we're gonna hear some um, pretty cool ideas later on about other ideas that people have had with that as well. But Great Strides is still what we do it for, so big big part of everybody's fundraising. So let's um, let's go. Oh, so at the end we're gonna have questions like we have on all these, and. You've seen this slide a hundred times, but we're going to go over it again. So if you have questions here in this room or at home, um, open up your browser. Go to cff.cnf.io, and our, se our session is Great Strides. So you can click that Ask, draft your question, and we'll uh, get to as many of those as we can at the end of each section. So... What I'm going to do first is introduce each of our panelists, and then we'll get into some questions for them. And I have to put on my glasses because I'm getting old. So um, Cheryl Kushner is our first panelist. She is a nurse practitioner at the Joe DiMaggio CF Center in Fort Lauderdale. And uh, she's going to talk about how she works from the care center perspective to get families involved. It's a pretty interesting perspective because people going to the care center, sometimes the CF chapter doesn't have access to them. They might not know any other CF families. They might not know anything about Great Strides. So it's an interesting um, perspective to look at how to recruit new families into Great Strides. She's also the team leader for her care team, and she also chairs the Hollywood, Florida Great Strides walk. And... They raised $14,000 last year. So welcome, Cheryl. All right. Thank you. <laughs> look, I asked Heather to like wave at me. That would require me to look at you, I guess. OK. <laughs> Thank you, Alyssa. Um, OK, so next we have uh, Susan Attell. Susan is from here, Dallas. She didn't have to deal with any flight problems. Woo um, she's going to talk about another interesting perspective. She has her own team in honor of her daughter, Ava. And the team name is Ava's Alliance. And they're a national family team. But she also has a pretty cool um, angle as far as recruiting new teams because she is involved with a parent advisory com um, committee and support groups and a lot of different angles that she can reach out to other people to get new teams recruited, involved, and being a national family team too, they actually raised $35,000 last year. So welcome, Susan. <laughs> the 
finally, we have Alyssa Chelius, and I am really excited to have her here. Um, we have gotten to know each other via phone, so we didn't know what he, we looked like, but we recognize each other's voices in the hall because Alyssa's always on our national family team calls, and that's a pretty fun way to uh, get to know people. Um, she's actually brand new in the CF world, and when you guys hear what she's done, you're going to be like blown away because I was. She has a 17-month-old son named George, and their team name is Super George. They live in Tampa. And um, like I said, year one, year one, seven teams around the country. And her team raised $53,000. So y'all are glad you're in this room right now because this is kind of a rock star panel. It's awesome. So um, I'm going to get started. I'm going to go back to Cheryl. Gotta flip my paper over. Okay, so you guys do some interesting things. Reaching out to families we don't have contact with, we might not be able to know. So talk to us about, I know you have some flyers, talk to us about what you've been able to do from the Care Center perspective to get new teams involved in Great Strides. Sure, I guess, well I've been at the CF Center now, actually Monday will be 17 years. And every year you're like, thank you. Thank you. But, you know, every year, like, what can you do different? How do you get families involved? I'm like, if I'm out there walking for you, why aren't you? Why isn't your spouse, your siblings? Why isn't anybody else out there with us, you know? So we started last year, we added a walk with the doc kind of campaign. So we took a group picture of all our docs. Our docs are very present, they're at the walk. When we do fundraisers, fundraisers they're there so you know it shows that we're invested in helping find your cure so they get emails they get multiple emails from me I have a really robust email list um, but it's helped and then as families come through as they come through for their clinic visit I'm usually that tie up the loose ends kind of person so it'll be like, hey how are you do you need your meds anything else going on what can I help you with and by the way and, you know, especially starting like January, Great Strides is always a part of that, and by the way. So, you know, our team name is Joe DiMaggio Cystic Fibrosis Center, but everything falls under my name. So last year, we had a new baby born like January, February, and this mom was like, at her second visit, she was like, I don't know, I'm like, listen, we're in it for you, baby's born today, it's not the same as a baby that was born 20 years ago. Initially, please don't go to the blogs. I want you to just absorb for now, and then you can reach out. So she called me like three, four weeks later, and she's like, hey, just want you to know I'm on a mission, and I'm going to knock that Cheryl Kushner off of the top of the fundraising list. <laughs> so honestly, like, but she just, she went with it, and, you know, she was raising thousands of dollars. Not huge like a lot of, most of you other people, but... You know what? Her baby was just born. She took it. She ran. So, you know, I let them know that the foundation's there for them. But again, the foundation needs their support. No one's in it alone. We're all in this together. You will see us. Another thing we do as a clinic is just because Great Strides is over, we all wear our shirts on CF days. So whether we're wearing the CF shirt that's given at the walk or our team shirt, you're still seeing CF every time you guys come to the clinic. You may not see a whole lot of it through the blue gown, but as we disrobe the gown, you know, it's there and they see it. Or let's say we're, you know, in the hallway and passing as they're coming and going. So they know that we're invested and, you know, again, we're all in this together. It's definitely not them on their own. So South Florida is very interesting. We actually, within like 75 miles, have five different walks and if you want to go like to 100 125 miles there's another walk honestly i want everybody to walk in hollywood because that's where our center is walk anywhere just get out there walk help find the money and let's all find the cure but they do you know some of them will go no we want to walk with the doc we want to walk with you i mean they see the little fundraisers like right now we're selling chocolate covered pretzels in the office Last year we were selling bracelets in the office. So they see we're invested in them, and I think that like kind of shows them they're doing for us, let's just jump on board and help do for ourselves. 
The hard part are some of the adults because they still live in the closet. They don't want their coworkers. We have a lot of teachers. So they don't want their students, and I try to teach them that just because you walk for a cause doesn't mean you have what that cause is for, but they're a tough, they're a tough bunch, so I would love some advice on how to break through that. But no, I think every year we definitely are growing more and more teams. You know what? Every dollar is the dollar, and who knows which is going to be that dollar that helps find the ultimate cure. So every bit helps. make sure I'm turned back on. Okay. Um, so I have a question that is not on here, but I think it is amazing that you do all that because that is such a perfect example of you, you changed that mom's life because you exposed her to this whole support group that she may not have known about. So that is huge. And I applaud you for that. Um, one of the things that I'm curious about though, because I love that your doctors are so, your whole care team is so in it. We have some care team members that come to Great Strides religiously and some that are so not involved. Do you have any advice for the parents on what we could do to go to our own care teams to ask them to maybe start a walk with the doc? Like what would you suggest that we say or who to talk to about maybe implementing that? I mean, I think, you know, there's always that professional and that personal level, but if you didn't have 100% faith in your physician, you would not be bringing your child to that physician. I mean, really, you wouldn't. And I think you could just bring it back home and go, listen, you know, we're doing X, Y, Z, we have this team, even if your care center, which would be great if your care center would get out and help support that or create their own team. But even if not, if that physician could join your team and just say, oh, listen, you've supported me with you know, all the medical support, the psycho psychosocial support, all those other things, but without the fundraising, without the dollars, there's gonna be no cure. You know? And I don't think it's gonna take a whole lot. Um, Again, different demographic areas have different amounts of walks. So again, our doctors come to us. You know, if there's vacations and every once in a while the hospital's too busy for one of them, but I think just ask them. You know, they might not even think that it's like something that they should be doing. And until you throw it out there, you're never gonna know. Perfect, thank you. All right, next, um, Susan, your turn. Um, you have all these different things that you do as far as parent involvement, support groups, advisory committees, and such. How do you reach out to, again, maybe people that aren't looped in as much as maybe we would like them to be? Sure, sure. So um, I am on the Parent Advisory Council, and one of our big initiatives this year has been to start the new family mentor program. And so although that's meeting a new family, one family at a time, that's still making a connection that may not otherwise have been made. And we also, with our Parent Advisory Council, we've been able to collect information about our parents just by reaching out to them and letting them know if you know, we can get your email address, we'll send you updates from the clinic, we'll send you tips, you know, parenting a, a child with special health care needs. And we include information from the CF Foundation chapter in those email blasts. So that's another connection that we can make from the clinic to the chapter that wouldn't have otherwise been made. We can also um, invite people from our chapter to our Parent Advisory Council events, and we do. So our CF Education Day, our chapter always has a table. They're always represented there, and so we always make that connection with the families as well. So that's the Parent Advisory Council and the Parent Mentor Program sort of connection to the chapter. And with the parent support group, I think that's really huge as well because, again, it's a one-on-one -on -one support, and we've heard for the last two days how your story really does communicate to people. But in these parent support groups, you're not reaching out to somebody who doesn't already live the story themselves. What you do is make that connection between the support that you feel from the foundation. So you can say that your very first walk of great strides, in my case, 
I wasn't our team leader, it was my aunt, because I was still sort of in this shock and grief stage. So you can tell families that it isn't all up to the parent that is providing all the care for their child. These other family members can really reach out and support and create a team for them. And you can walk, but our very first walk, I just, I just walked. I was sort of carried by the team. So that's a way that you can converse with new families as well, that it's not all up to them, but it still can be done you know, with the support of their family members. And a newly diagnosed family, the family members really don't know what to do because they're not involved in that day-to-day -day care necessarily. And they're begging for ways to support their family members. So that this is a one really great way to do that, just to create a team for them. So that happened for me, and I know that's happened for several other families. As well with the support group, it's a it's a online support group as well. So we have several different Facebook um, pages in the DFW area. I think we have four. And then with the support group, there's a separate Facebook page for the support group, and we meet monthly. And so everything about Great Strides is posted to all these different pages. And so it's just a great way to reach out to new families who may be going to that Facebook page just to get a question answered about how to sterilize a nub cup or you know, a, a best way to handle the child not wanting to do their treatments. But then they see this other larger group that's out there supporting them with the foundation. And Great Strides, for, for me, it really is, since CF is such an isolating illness, it's the one place where you really can get together and your children can see each other and they can see people face to face who are fighting the same battle that they're fighting. And as the children get older, this is becoming more important. My daughter is six now and she's becoming much more aware that nobody else in her school is waking up at six to do treatments and nobody else is having to race home to get a treatment done before racing back to school to get soccer practice. So to meet some of those families face to face at Great Strides is, is becoming much more important to her. And so to be able to communicate that to our families through the Facebook post or through that support group is a really important thing as well. I, I totally, um, I, I totally agree with that. It's it's awesome what this generation of CF families have that that even I didn't in 2002 is the social media and the family advisory councils and all of this. And I do remember going to Great Strides, and you know I was surrounded by my family and friends, but I didn't know anybody. And now I there's I was just looking around to see if Melissa's in here, but um, she's not. I'll have to get her out for that one. Um, anyway, this new crop, I say a new crop of um, young CF moms in Atlanta, and we did this photo shoot last month and, and had four of the new moms come to it, and I, I was at the shoot, and I was watching them, and they were like carpooling together, and they are like, uh, like hanging out and <laughs> doing all this stuff, and I was like, I, I, was so, um, I was so happy, and I felt like a proud mama, but I also felt that little tinge of jealousy because... I didn't have that, but I'm so, so glad that they do. And it is stuff like what you're doing that creates those, that space for people to, to feel that network, truly feel it. And what the foundation is doing now with all of the support that they're putting toward the daily quality of life for the entire family. So that makes a huge difference. So thank you for that. Sure, I'll, I'll add one more thing. In terms of carpooling, um, I love that you just grouped me with young moms, but <laughs> I, uh, I did carpool slash Uber with another much younger mom who's here in the room, Susanna, and we go to wine openers together. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's really a great community that you really, it, it is really established through Great Strides. That's where you kind of meet everybody. But it's really fun to sort of branch out and do and do things like that. So yeah, totally. And we do like wine, so and that's we a good, love wine. good thing to go to. I like it. Awesome. Thank you, Susan. All right, you're up, girl. Okay. Let me um, let me just remind you all that you know you're one. She has a 17 month old. Speaking of new young moms, a um, 17 month old, and um, I learned something very quickly about Alyssa. I think it might have been our first conversation post-National Family Teams call where we kind of stayed on the line and chatted. 
and I'm in Atlanta, and she's in Tampa. She's going to embarrass me right now. I can't tell. <laughs> No, it's not. It's awesome. I was like, she, I kind of love her. Um, she, she was frustrated um, with, they, they did, had an amazing, amazing, I mean amazing first year. Seven teams, $53,000. And um, she was feeling some pressure because she was having some particular people, um, hopefully they're not watching, um, say, uh, well, don't expect that next year. Because this is your first year, everybody's kind of shocked, and you know it's not going to happen next year. Uh, you know what her response was? You're right. I'm going to do a hundred thousand next year. I hope we do. <laughs> no pressure, though. So yeah, talk to us about um, how did you do that? How did you get seven teams? How did you come out of the gates and raise that much money? And you know, you obviously have some fire in your belly, which is awesome. So. But tell us. I guess so. Is this, this is on? Can you hear me? Um, so it was funny when I got this call because George was still an infant when we started our team. So short of changing dirty diapers, late night feedings, and crying children, I do not remember much. But my wonderful husband, Mac, who's here today, wave your hand. <laughs> we got together and we like thought about it and we're like, okay, th this is how we found out about Great Strides and about the national family team. So it started in um, October of 2015 when George was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. We were at our wonderful care center, Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital in St. Pete. And um, they were talking to us about George's diagnosis, coaching us on how to give him enzymes, how to do CPT, how to do these breathing treatments. But they also said, do not, under any circumstances, Google cystic fibrosis. See? Okay? Right? See? This is like the corner rule. I wanted to be a rule follower, so I did not do that. And they told me to go to check out this foundation, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, cff.org. You will learn more about, you know, other families going through this, you know, um, other people's journeys, and I did do that. And so when I was waking up at 1 o'clock and 5 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock in the morning, you have a lot of time to surf the Internet. And so I did go on cff.org, and I learned about um, not only, you know, all these other wonderful and also wonderful things about cystic fibrosis, but um, about the fundraising initiatives. And Great Strides really st stuck out to me, one, because it's easy, right? You just show up and walk. You don't you know, have to do much, which I thought was really great. Also, it was inclusive, because I have a five-year-old as well. So I have a five-year-old and a, and a 17-month-old now. And John, my five-year-old, is as much in the fight for his brother's life as, as my husband and I are, and our extended family. And so I, you know, he can't hike a mountain, and he can't cycle, you know, cycle long distances yet, but he can walk. And so I really thought that this would be something great for our family. Um, and so, you know, it, I, I lo looked on a little bit more. I found out that they had one in Tampa, and I immediately knew that that's, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do a Great Strides team. And then, as far as the national, yeah. are you so, going to ask Yeah, me? that's what normal people would do, and just say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to my yeah. local walk that's five minutes down the road, but then, then you had seven. Yes, okay, so, the, the, so that was a little bit more convoluted. So, so what happened was I decided we were going to do the one in Tampa, and I started calling my family, we're going to do a Tampa walk. But, you know, Matt grew up in Tallahassee, and, and this is similar to what Ginger said. You know, Matt grew up in Tallahassee, I grew up in Fort Lauderdale area, and I didn't even realize at the time we could do three walks. I was like, well, no, you know, it's one team, one walk. I didn't really understand, you know, how to, how to make it grow. But my friend, and this is kind of convoluted, my friend Heather, who's on the board um, in Fort Lauderdale, CF Foundation board in Fort Lauderdale, put me in touch with Peter. And Peter put me in touch with Ginger. And Ginger mentioned a national family team. And that's how I found out about it. And so, um, you know, the way that it grew from there, before we lived in Tampa, we lived in Baltimore for eight years, and so I asked a friend in Baltimore if she would start a team. My best friend lives in Atlanta. I asked Cami if she would start a team. My brother and sister and one of Matt's cousins lives out in Los Angeles. They wanted to start a team. Do you see where I'm getting? Do you see where I'm going here? Do you see where I'm going? Um, Matt's Aunt Jerry lives in Houston. She has three daughters. Two of them live in Houston, and they have eight grandkids between them. I'm like, that's a team already. You don't even need to invite anyone else. That's a team. So, and that's how we got started. That's how we had the seven teams. I think it was Tampa, Fort Lauderdale, Tallahassee, Baltimore, Atlanta, Houston, and Santa Monica. So. Hmm.
That's not too shabby. Yeah. And I'm telling you, and I don't want to say it's, it's super easy. You know, um, in the beginning, the first year, you know, everyone wanted to jump on board and get on board. The second year, I mean, pretty much everyone still wanted to get on board. But, you know, we had some bumps. We had some people, um, you know, that Matt's dad couldn't lead the Tallahassee walk because he was going to be out of town. So Matt's taking the lead. He's going down there with, you know, we're going to go down there and lead it together. Um, so, you know, the way that this grows, I think it's just organically. And some, some as I'm learning, it's just my second year. Some people are going to be able to do it and some people aren't, but that's why you need to continue to grow and to continue to um, think of people you, you want to ask. And so this year, I'm proud to say, we have at least nine teams walking for Super George. That's so I'm amazing. really excited. That's me. So I know we've talked, we met on the phone. So um, talk about what's, what the national family team calls have helped you with in this whole process. Absolutely. I'm so glad you reminded me to say that. So when I originally started this, again, just to, to remind you, I have this little infant with a disease I've never heard about, and I'm, I'm trying to start all these teams in all these different countries. So I felt kind of scared. I didn't know exactly what to do or how to do it. But then I realized that all I needed to do was get on these monthly calls with these amazing people that have been doing this for a lot more years than I have done this. So Ginger, Pam, Laura, Maureen, Erica Cook, all these people are not only mentors for Great Strides, but they were mentors for me as a new CF mom. And we did talk about Great Strides, and we talk about how to craft your story, how to navigate the website and register, um, passion fundraising events, all of these different topics throughout the year on these national family team calls. But they also, you know, I, I remember asking, you know, I had a question and I, I didn't know the answer. And I'm like, I'm kind of embarrassed to ask this because I feel like I should know this. But, you know, w tell me about this or tell me about that. And so they were there for me in that capacity too, not just for, you know, a fundraising and great strides um, capacity. Awesome. Well, that is impressive. You're all impressive. Um, so do we want to we want to do the uh, you're pointing. Oh, do we want to do that? Or the um, thing that Erica gave me? Erica? Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. We're so secretive. Um, <laughs> because, because it's not on my script, but I did see... Where is she? There she is. Maureen Ballard. So we just talked about national family teams, and Maureen, you guys just saw her up on stage um, from Hawaii, and she co-chairs our national family teams and she actually got an award top fundraising team for doing it for Drew you want to talk for a minute about okay okay all right um, uh, Susan you mentioned that your first family team or your first team was led by your aunt aunt's rule right? they do <laughs> you never no. Who is going to be willing to step up to the plate? You just have to ask. You don't even really have to ask. Just be honest and say, I can't do it all. I'm co-lead of our national family team now because my sister-in-law, Erin, Erin Moore, many of you may know her, um, said, I'm busy doing other stuff. I want us to still have a team. I can't do it. Another sister-in-law and I stepped forward and said, we got this. You take care of what you need to do. And so that's started, well, continued part of my journey on National Family Team. Thank you. I think Maureen makes a fantastic point, and I think a lot of us maybe get caught up sometimes asking for help, right? So you don't want to ask people to do something. Everybody's already so busy. But when you're living with this disease, as we all know, it, um, it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy. And I think that we all have to get over, I know I'm super guilty of this, um, letting people help you instead of asking for help. It's letting people help you because people want to help. And if you don't give them options, maybe it's this, maybe it's being a walker, maybe, you know, I, I tell people all the time, everybody has their specialty, whether it's sitting with my kids in the hospital so I can go be with my other kids let people in and let them help you because they want to and you know then you might have 75 teams in your first year so 
Oh, gorgeous. I, I exaggerate a little bit, not, not that much. That's okay. Um, I'll, I'll have 75 teams. Who wants to start a Super George team? <laughs> See? Come on, raise your hand. <laughs> She's not afraid of asking that one. All right, so now it's question time, and I hope I know how to use this. What do I do? I don't see anything. I see, ask a question. <laughs> Help. All right. Well, while we're figuring that out, does anyone have a question in the room? Somebody's got to have a question. Laura Gordon, I know you have a question. <laughs> what is the next national family team call? Ooh, Ooh. Good, good question. When is the next national family team call? And it happens to be very relevant because it's next week. It's next, see, am I just not getting it? Next Tuesday, they're always once a month on Tuesdays at eight. What? What do you have to do to become a national family team? How many teams do you need to become a team to race? Oh, well, there's so a flyer. Awesome. There's a flyer right here, too, that you can here. refer to. Go yes. with the flyer, Alyssa. Okay, go with Talk the flyer. the flyer. But you need to have teams in three different markets. And um, if you want, if you want to get involved, I think I just emailed Erica and said I want to start a national family team. Erica's in the back. I just met her. She's one of the people. She helps lead the call with Ginger and and Laura and everyone else. And um, I just said I've got, you know, I have a couple teams that I want to that I want to sign up. Yes. <laughs> Say the question again, Laura. Um, so if I want to be a national family team, but I'm afraid to ask my friends. <laughs> yeah, be afraid. <laughs> so hypothetically, I want to be a national family team, and um, I'm afraid because I'm worried that when I ask my friends, I'm asking them to raise thousands of dollars for me because I'm thinking that's what we have to do for national family teams. Can you tell me about how much... They have to raise. Yeah, so um, we have a goal for national family teams. The goal is to have three teams in, in, in three unique markets. So, um, and, and then the overall team to raise 10000 which can be overwhelming for some people, but that's the goal. It's just like they say for a great strides. Have a team, get 10 walkers, raise $1,500. That's the goal. We're not going to kick you out if you, don't, if you don't reach that goal. So that's, you know, just be there as support for your for your. Um, for the people that you're bringing on as your team leaders. So does that answer your question, Laura? And I also think um, being afraid to share your story, that was me. Um, when I got on the very first national family team call, it was in March of 2016, and um, I had still hadn't told anyone that George had CF, and he was already you know, several months old at that point. And um, the people on this call, I told them that, that I hadn't said anything, I hadn't you know, my close friends knew, but I didn't reach out on Facebook or any kind of social media. And they encouraged me to do that. And they said, when people find out, when people hear your story, they're going to want to help you. And it was true. We had thousands and thousands of dollars worth of donations. Friends reached out to me that I hadn't spoken to in years. Um, you know, saying, Elissa, it's so great to hear from you. Um, I'm so sorry to hear about George. How is everything going? How are you doing? So the more you share your story, the more other people can help. And so to that scared person, that's, that's how you do it. Great advice. Awesome. Well, we have our online questions working. So Susan, the first question is for you. So um, how do people go about finding out where or how to reach out to maybe they have a local parent advisory? How would you, how would you recommend people doing that? So our Parent Advisory Council is connected to our care center. I know it's not that way in all areas um, by design. I think they've separated from some care centers to have a little bit more flexibility with their finances and their decisions. We currently are still connected to our care center. We're, we're really only two years into our Advisory Council here in Dallas. So you can start with the care center. You can even ask, I would imagine your, your chapter might know if that's happening in your area. Other parents might know if that's happening as well. So. Yeah, that's, that's true. And I think um, a lot of times Facebook, you can find oh, sure. stuff through there too, for sure. Awesome. Cheryl, got a question for you. Ready. All right. Um, if, okay, so we, we touched on this um, a little bit already, but if you... 
if you don't have an involved care center now um, team in great strides and you have that parent that wants to go now I can't remember if you actually said this or not and I'm hoping you didn't since it's on this question um, who who would be the point person who would who would you suggest people talk to nurse practitioner or the social worker who would be best I would probably go back to either like the central coordinator the medical director or the social worker mm -hmm. it just depends probably on who you had that best relationship with because I think once you have that bond and you know you're digging deep and you know you're showing how much you want their help to help find a cure for, you know for your child so I would go with the person you probably have that best relationship with yeah that makes sense because it is different at every single one right Good. everybody has that different special relationship mm -hmm. great awesome um, Susan I have another one for you um, what what do you do as part of your mentor role? Like, what does that look like? Someone someone wrote that they just signed up to help in that capacity at their clinic, so they just want a little heads up. What's sure. happening? Sure. Well, thank you for signing up. First of all, um, we were trained. We went through a pretty significant, you know, four hour training. Um, what to say, what not to say, um, and I think that we've all heard statements from very well-meaning friends or family that were not supportive at all. And so I think mentor training is very, very important. We tried to have our mentorship program, we have tried for several years to have it started, and it, it took a lot of, a, a lot of encouragement, I guess, from the parents and that this was really something that we really needed. And so I think that our, our care center initially was hesitant, and I think similarly why they, have not, why they had not st started the support group here, our Dallas support group was actually started by a CF parent, was a, you know, privacy issues and that kind of thing. And so the mentorship training program took a little time to get started, but it also was a very diligent, intentional slow, seemingly slow start because of how important and how diligent you need to be when you respond or when you reach out to a new parent as a mentor versus a friend. So our social worker initiated the training and has initiated the relationships. So there are five or six of us that are new family mentors in Dallas and we each have been paired with one family so far, and those have been families that have either reached out to the social worker to have a mentor or who the social worker has reached out to to offer a new family mentor. I totally agree. So we do that in Atlanta, too. We have a mentoring program, and it's huge. Um, I think a lot of us mentor by default when you, when you have new CF families come into your circle, um, but it's really important to get that training because it's the crossing the lines right are hard like you don't give medical advice you you know you can't do any of this stuff that seems so natural like well for me this is what i do and um you know that gets that gets pretty touchy at times so having the proper training tools to know how to handle those questions when they come right. super important yeah. did, you, did you have a question Hi, my name's Colleen Argentieri. We'll be holding our 25th Great Strides Walk this year for our two children. Um, one of the things that I just wanted to remind people that really could bring in some additional funds is if you are making a donation, which we all do, please double check with your company, your friends' companies, your family's companies to make sure or to check to see if they are matching gift company because you could just absolutely double your income and donation. So I think when we get in the planning stages and you know everything's so crazy that those little things are easy to forget. So just as a little reminder, so. A great reminder actually. That's, that's like the epitome of uh, work smarter, not harder. Look for the matching money. Yes. Oh, sorry. Wait. 
Okay. Um, all right. I have a quick question for Elisa. Um, did you do anything special to kind of connect your teams? Like, did you have a special uh, token or totem or T-shirt or something to kind of um, to go across those seven teams and now nine teams to kind of um, connect them in a way other than just the name and the fundraising goal? Yes, um, we had t-shirts made. I wish I had one here or a picture of one. They came out really cute. It's Super George um, t-shirts that we provided for all of our walks across the country. And um, my mother generously purchased them and donated them to our cause. Um, the person that she got them with, the company, he gave us a great deal. So um, it was it was great, and, and everyone loved the shirts, and the kids still wear them, and they post pictures of them on Facebook. Oh, look at the kids today. They're wearing their Super George shirts, and just more, you know, plugs for CF Foundation and, and our son. That's a great question. Okay. Um, would, Sorry. One more. One more. Okay, so I have a team here at the Northeast Texas chapter called Team Rock Solid, and my son is 36 years old. He'll be 37 in September, and God bless him, he's only been in the hospital one time in 37 years. So I can, I can literally, if I was to tell my elevator version of my story, that would be it. But if you have, and this is gonna sound really weird, but if you have three different teams as part of a family team in three different markets, where does all the money go? Does it go to your home team? Does it go to that markets? I mean, does, does it all have to be divided up? I mean, how does that how does that work? So that's a, that's actually a really good question, and um, I'll I'll answer it quickly so we can uh, have time for our next panel. But um, when I started with. Uh, national family teams with our own team in Atlanta, it was probably 2004, and so there were no national family teams back then. And chapters certainly didn't embrace the idea of giving up the money that was being sent to them um, back then, because the people that were starting the teams would, would have sent me a check to Atlanta, right? And now they're starting a team and it's going to, it, it, it goes to their chapter, it goes to their local chapter. Um, and that, that, you know, it, I, chapters are way more receptive to it now and, and in fact do embrace national family teams so yeah wherever they start their walk site the money that team's money goes to that chapter yeah all right well you guys this has been amazing you guys are so informative thank you so much um round of applause so now that was all on recruitment now we're going to talk about Getting our walkers to fundraise. It's awesome to get our walkers to come and walk. And I think we've always just been so grateful that people would come and show up and walk with us that maybe we've missed the boat, and I say we meaning me, um, missed the boat on actually making the ask to get our walkers to raise money themselves and not just show up. So I need some strategies on that. I know that I do. So we're going to... Um, get some uh, experts in this field. You know, we have about, I know some walks already took place and we have walks that go all the way to October, but most of them are happening in the next month, month and a half. So it's time to uh, get these people signed up and actually fundraising. So we'll do the same thing. I'll introduce each person and then I have a couple questions for each of you. And then again, we'll um, have time for questions. So... You guys got that whole thing already. So, Ryan Irving is first. Ryan and his wife, Whitney, um, have a son, Shep, and they've been doing great strides for five years. Team name is Steps for Shep, and they walk out of Jackson, Mississippi. So, last year, um, so they've been doing this for five years. They raised uh, over $30,000 last year doing great strides. <laughs> What I'm very excited to hear about from you, though, is um, it says here you've done some fun and creative <laughs> fundraising. So I am on looking forward to hearing about that. So we'll get back to you in a minute, but welcome. Um, next, we have Jen Lehman. Jen's team is, um, just breathe. Yeah. 
Not breath. No. Okay, breathe. <laughs> breathe. <laughs> I don't want to say it wrong. Breathe for Olivia. Um, and she has a, a, another, uh, she's, she's an awesome aunt. Her uh, niece, Olivia, um, who is 15 years old. So they've been walking for eight years. And they've, they walk out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And last year, they raised over $35,000. But collectively, in the last eight years, they're at the $250,000 mark. That is amazing. But the next thing that's also amazing is they have 140 people who walk on your team, something like that. What? That's crazy. That's crazy. And about half of them so far... Actually, fundraise, right? Okay, so that's going to be awesome. You're going to be a great resource. So next, we have Corey Jetzel. All right. Um, they have um, Strength to Soar as their team name. Three kids, two with CF. Yes, Lainey is nine, Graham is six, and then they have Connor, who's five. And they walk here, Fort Worth. Is, are we here? Is that Dallas, Fort Worth? Yeah. Sure. Ish. <laughs> Here-ish. We're all one now. Okay. We're all one now. <laughs> That's right. So um, they, their team is awesome too. Um, Nineteen thousand dollars last year, and it says, "Fun fact, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun that you have every single walker raises money, wow. right? That's amazing. That's amazing. So let's get to it." Ryan, you're up. Okay, thanks. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about our story. <clears throat> our son, Shep, was born in the fall of 2011, and uh, he was missed in newborn screening, so we took home what we thought was a healthy baby. Um, looking back, it's obvious now he was struggling to gain weight and things like that. Uh, spring of 2012, he had blockage in his stomach, emergency surgery. The surgeon suggested CF could be the culprit. Uh, so through testing, we did find out um, uh, later that spring that he was, in fact, uh, positive for cystic fibrosis. So that first year, as most people know, was much like what Lisa was saying, was, you know, we, we stayed away from the Google, and we, we were trying to figure out what this life was going to look like. Um, so we did not really tap in very much as far as fundraising, great strides. We were trying to figure out what life looked like, because we have an older son picture of health probably hadn't been to the doctor twice in his whole life he's about to be um, eight this summer so it was it was quite the apple turnover for us um, in regards to care for a child so fundraising was the last thing on our mind at that time um, our executive director uh, Renda McGowan reached out to us uh, pretty quickly and just kind of encouraged us hey when you're ready we want you to get involved um, and so I, at the time, was playing a lot of golf. The chapter had a nice uh, golf event. And Renda said, hey, just come on out, help us with this. You know, we kind of need some new blood. Help us kind of get this thing going. So that was kind of our first, my first, and our family's first involvement in um, fundraising. Um, so that was kind of what broke the ice for us. I got to know more people in, the, in our community. I got to see kind of corporately who was involved, who wasn't involved, and things like that. Um, Really and truly, our, our first year um, involved with Great Strides was really, uh, I think, Shep's second year of life. And we kind of limped into Great Strides. It's a walk. You go and you show up and you walk. And I think we gave some money and maybe our parents gave some money. And that was kind of the extent of it. The next year, um, we were invited to come to VLC. And I think VLC is probably um, was probably the most influential part for our family, um, learning how to get involved, how to tap in. Uh, we were pretty overwhelmed the first year at VLC. Uh, and so this is being our third year, um, we still are able to gather information. Uh, we really love hearing other people's ideas. Um, a lot of our ideas were spawned from other people's ideas. Uh, we just maybe take a concept and tweak it here and there, whatever. At the end of the day, we're all doing the same thing. We just got to find what fits our personalities, our lifestyles, and, um, and kind of our, our people in our lives, our friends and family. So our great strides, it's kind of an annual thing. Um, you know, last year we did raise uh, a little over $30,000 um, over the course of the year. That did not come strictly from our walk. 
Um, we take uh, an approach of two or three different ways, four, and we're going to maybe expand that this year as to how do we get to our um, goal. And so what we do is, one of the first things we do is we use social media. Um, my wife and I are on social media. We're not social media nuts uh, until it comes time for fundraising, and then we're fanatics. Um, we, were, we sat in the uh, social media breakout earlier, and I was hearing everybody saying, you know, people are going to unfriend you, and I feel like we probably have lost some Facebook friends, but that's okay. Um, but the ones we've kept have supported us, and they continue to support us. So one thing that we do, uh, one phase of our fundraising is through direct social media. Um, about four weeks prior to the walk, we will really get aggressive and remind everybody, hey, it's that time of year again, okay? Let's get ready to, uh, to donate. Here's, you know our story. Here's where we are. Here's where the foundation is. Here's where science is. All the things that we gather uh, from this weekend, the, the information, we go back and relay it. We use that. We use pictures. We use videos. Something that's been really successful for us is... Um, using our son Shep uh, in those videos um, to give him an opportunity. He's five, and he's kind of taken this on, and he kind of has taken some ownership of it. And he enjoys thanking people for helping and asking for people to help, and we do updates as we're going. He'll hold a sign up and say, this is how much we've reached towards our goal. Please help us finish out strong, things like that. And what's interesting is, is that every time we post, and we don't, we don't post two and three or four times a day, but you know, every other day, every two or three days, we're going to put something out there. We watch that little meter spike every time we do that. And we have found a lot of success in utilizing uh, him, uh, videos, pictures, statistics, graphs, charts, anything that's visual that gets people to tap into kind of what's going on. So that's kind of our um, direct what, what I look at is just a cold ask for money, okay? We're asking you, give us money towards this cause. Secondarily, on the, on the social media side, something we did this year and we're trying to get better at and we're going to get better at is involving our friends and family, going to that second layer of, of, of influence, getting them to get out there, let them post to their friends. An interesting story, my brother... Um, I asked him this year, I said, please, I want you to, to really make an effort to put a strong post out once or twice over the next couple of weeks, whatever you can do. Well, he posts, and about 10 minutes later, we get three donations of about $250 each, okay, from three people that I'm Facebook friends with. <laughs> okay? So I'm saying, th first of all, I'm mad at these three people because they didn't give all, all, all my requests. But, but, but what became clear to me was... Maybe it was that second layer of ask. Maybe it was that person asking. Maybe, maybe he influenced them more than I did, which is fine. We just want people to participate. But it really opened our eyes to say, you know, we've got to find the people that have a circle of influence that can capitalize on that. He, is, uh, he lives in Nashville. We live in Jackson, Mississippi. And he's in the golf industry. We have people giving simply because he had influenced their life somehow. They didn't know Shep, they didn't know me, they didn't know CF. They knew my brother, and because he asked, they gave. If it was meaningful to him, it was meaningful to them. And so that was something that's really opened our eyes, and, uh, and we're going to really try to expand on that as we go forward. Um, you know, some creative things that we've done, and, and some of this is of our doing, and some of it is some of our, our neat friends. We've got some really special friends. We've got one particular a uh, girl that's a good friend of my wife's and, and mine. And last year, um, she's got this world-famous cinnamon roll recipe that everybody loves. It's handmade cinnamon rolls. So what she did was she made pans of cinnamon rolls. She's a Facebook fanatic. And so she puts out, hey, I got cinnamon rolls for sale. And so she sold a few. And she called us, hey, I want to donate that money from the cinnamon rolls to the wall. Well, ended up being she raised over $1,200 selling, selling cinnamon rolls. Okay? She actually quit because she was exhausted. She was up all night, <laughs> seriously, making cinnamon rolls. Uh, and her husband finally called me and said, you've got to cut this off. She's not, <laughs> she's not sleeping. But, but that, again, opened our eyes up to, you know, there's more to this deal than just asking people to donate money. It was, a, it was a skill she had. It was a talent. And she had a wonderful recipe that people paid for. And they overpaid for it. They were happy to pay 20 bucks for a pan of cinnamon rolls, you know. Hey, it's a good cause, and it's a great cinnamon roll. So that worked out great for us there. We've got another good friend that's a local sports personality, radio personality. 
Um, and he has been working to uh, his way up to running marathons, half marathons. And so he utilizes the walk as a sounding board for, for his radio audience and asks them to make pledges towards, uh, towards his time if he meets certain benchmarks and things like that. That was an idea he had. It was very creative. Um, and then this year we really got some feedback from uh, a flyer. We took two personalized flyers, one to Shep School and one to our older son's school, and asked them to put them in their little take-home folders. Um, and it's really some really interesting um, stories that came back. Shep's teacher, we got a, a $90 uh, donation from her. She had been off on jury duty and been paid 90 bucks, and she felt like that that was something she felt called to donate on, on Shep's behalf, you know. Um, and it's really cute when they come home and you've got a Ziploc with three $1 bills in it. It's from little Becky or whoever it is in the class that that's Shep, you know, that's their buddy. Um, and then a little more on that, we're, we're at our great, we had our walk last Saturday. And we're there and we, we're getting ready to start up and all of a sudden Shep sees one of his friends from school. Now Shep's five, he's in pre-K or whatever. And here's this little kid and his mom and dad. And they're there because the son wanted to run with his friend Shep. And so they ran together, you know. And so what it did was it started to open our eyes as there are, you know, who knows what that mom and dad, they may have brought just their son, but they may also be the heir to some estate or some large corporation that can tap in, right? <laughs> so, you know, we're going to get to know them better <laughs> and see what that looks like. And then, you know, those are just some neat stories, but you know, moving forward this year, um, we're going to try to identify about eight to ten people in our circle that have some talents and try to encourage them, uh, somewhat like the national family teams, to where, you know, look, if you can go out and just find something you can do to raise two thousand bucks, if we do that ten times, right, twenty thousand, in addition to our giving, in addition to the cinnamon rolls, in addition to the runs, and then our big kind of our benchmark. Um, event for our family that we started last year was our cornhole for a cure and what we did was we had a cornhole tournament um, it was a day it was something that um, i kind of dreamed up a couple years ago at vlc we want to do something that was family friendly you know in a golf tournament if you don't play golf you don't go to golf tournaments right if you if you don't cycle you're not going out cycling if you don't you know so we want to do something anybody could do so our, we had a 64 team cornhole tournament uh, double elimination lasted about four hours. Unfortunately, it was in the heat of the summer, and we're going to look for a change of date this year. But we had everybody. I think our youngest team was, was a couple five-year-olds, and our oldest team was um, a couple men in their early 70s. So we had this broad spectrum of a day, family fun. Anybody can throw a beanbag at a hole, listening to music, good food, things like that. And uh, it was a good success. We, we grossed over 30000 at that event alone. Now, we didn't net that. We, only, we netted south of twenty, But um, we learned a lot in that process in our first year, how to generate the revenue. And now, moving forward, we're going to generate a better net because we know what to ask for. We know what cost us. And so that's something else that, um, that we did. A couple of things, and, I, and I'll be quiet. I told you all, you all probably wouldn't get to talk very much. <laughs> but... Um, you know, as we move forward, it's really interesting, and this is something that's really spoken to me. In the, in the CF community, you never know who's got a connection, and that's my eyes have been open wide to that. I went to a local promoter to help me advance our cornhole tournament. I start off the same way we all do. I know you probably don't know much about CF, but my child, and he interrupted me, he said, my best friend died from CF last year. How can I help you? He's the largest activities promoter in our area, and he's going to help this year. So we're looking forward to that. We had a musical act last year at our cornhole tournament. During the break, he said, I just want to let you know that the guy that taught me how to play guitar, his son has cystic fibrosis. Mm -hmm. You know, we're sitting at a, at a bar waiting on a table one night, and we're talking to this guy. Come to find out he's the president of the largest bank in our area. His son's best friend had CF and is actually in Houston now working with the CF group down there. So, you know, talking about it... Oh, excuse me. Talking about it um, really has opened up a lot of doors for us. So really, my, my closing thing would be ask, 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 talk about it, shoot for the moon, go big, go big and grow into it. But also remember, it's, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Find a way to get some traction and grow it. OK, so other than that, it's it's been a it's been a fun ride for us. 
we've, we've had some good success and we're proud of what we've done. So thank you. Well, the notes were correct. Those are fun and creative. <laughs> I, and I need some cinnamon rolls. And delicious. I'm seriously craving them right now. Um, so um, that is amazing. I love the ask, ask, ask. And it, I find that too. The more you share your story, the more connections and the more connections you make with people with their own CF stories. For this little tiny orphan disease, there are so many people you're going to run into that know somebody that ha they want to be a part of what you're doing because it means something to them too, but they don't know it if you don't share it. So thank you for reminding us of that. All right, Jen, so you got a lot of walkers. You got a lot of fundraising walkers. You got a lot going on. Talk to us. <laughs> um, so uh, just a little bit on my story. Um, in July of 2009, my niece Olivia was um, Um, really sick and we didn't know what was wrong with her. I wasn't gonna do this. <laughs> um, and um, she finally came down with pneumonia and um, she was tested for a lot of things. Um, they just threw in a sweat test, said they were sure that's not what it was, but let's just throw it in anyway. My sister-in-law is a nurse and uh, was there with the doctor and looking at the numbers um, and knew right away what it was. And I got the phone call on the way home from the doctor and um, yeah, so that was how we learned about that and we just went to work from there. Um, we had a couple of close family friends that had CF so we were very familiar with it um, and it kind of scared the crap out of us. So um, anyway, <clears throat> we, in 2010 we started our uh, Breathe for Olivia team. Um, that year we had about 100 to 125 people show up and we raised uh, $21,500 that very first year. Uh, in 2012, we became a national family team. And in 2014, uh, Breathe for Olivia actually became a, our, uh, an official nonprofit organization so that we can kind of do our own thing. Um, we give about 99% of our money back to the foundation. Um, but we had a, um, a local man that we knew that had, went through a uh, lung transplant last year and um, we supported his family with some fundraisers and um, we hope to uh, support others with some grants, you know, through our foundation too. So anyway, um, yeah, and not to brag, but I think we're not at like 140. I think last year we hit like 300 walkers actually. Oh. <laughs> we, <laughs> we can't really count. <laughs> We have no idea, like, we, we see people in town with our Breathe for Olivia shirts on, and we're like, who are you? We have no idea. <laughs> so, um, to get to our fundraising, that our t-shirt sale is, like, our biggest one every year. Um, I hear a lot of people talking about their t-shirts. My advice, and I know my sister-in-law would definitely agree, change it every year. Make them buy a new t-shirt every year. <laughs> and don't donate them. <laughs> Make them buy them. <laughs> That's how we get everyone involved, and I, I'm serious. All 300 of our teammates buy a new T-shirt every single year. We probably raise $6,000. The entire high school at Olivia School, they're all decked out in their Breathe for Olivia shirts. Um, so we just got our first shipment in this past week, so we started sending the kids to school in them so that their friends see them, and they come home the next day like, hey, Max wants one, Joe wants one, you know, everybody wants one. Um, a couple of other things that we do. Um, coming up next Friday, we have our annual adult egg hunt. It's a flashlight egg hunt. <laughs> um, it's a lot of fun. We hide about uh, between two and 3,000 eggs. In them are prizes. Um, it's on a ball field. We shut out the lights. Everybody brings their own flashlights, grabs the eggs. We go next door to, uh, to a bar and um, open up the eggs, <laughs> and if you have a prize ticket, you hang around and we give out the prizes. Um, nice. And in fact, we have a custom-made cornhole with Breathe for Olivia, cool. uh, donated by a, our friend who just had the double lung transplant. So cool. it's pretty special, yeah. So we raised about $5,000 with that. Um, I have four brothers, and um, 
Each one of them is basically responsible for an event each year. Um, <laughs> they have no choice. Um, one of them just threw, um, we're from Pennsylvania Dutch country, so it's called Haas, it's a card party. He had about 56 players and they raised $2,800 a few weeks ago. Um, they're gonna open it up to a larger venue next year and hope to hit like 80 players and, and double that money. Um, on Wednesday, right before Shanna and I left to come here, we had a ham and cheese sandwich sale. Um, we sell between 900 and 1,000. So we get all of our walkers involved. We give, them, we give them the opportunity to sell. We send out the order forms. Everyone sells at their, at their um, places of employment. And then, they, and then we have a pickup day. And along with that, um, we, we, we make um, peanut butter eggs and coconut eggs. And so that day, that day is peanut butter egg, coconut egg, t-shirt sale, and ham and cheese pickup day. So we open up my parents' garage, and everybody comes and, and picks up their things. Um, we made over 7,000 uh, peanut butter and coconut eggs this year, and we, we make about $6,000 on that. But, I mean, to be honest, I was, I was counting a list of our team members that actually help us with that. I mean, it, it's a lot of work, the, the peanut butter eggs that we make, but um, I think we had like 15 to 20 of our walkers come and help us. So it, it's a way to get them involved, and and they they sell it and so we in turn donate back to their walk accounts when they sell that that stuff for us um, and then what we do with all of those empty peanut butter jars is we um, hand them out to all of the kids to get all the kids from our walk team involved and we do a, a coins for cure we give them out and have them collect all their spare change it's just a way to get them involved also and they, they like to Turn that in. I think last year we, I don't know, we got close to a thousand dollars maybe. And then the the kid who brings us the most change, we gave them a Chuck E. Cheese party. Um, we have a golf tournament that's uh, run by um, our friends um, who run our our uh, Virginia Walk team. Um, we have a sweetheart dance, and we um, alternate each year. The first year we had a daddy daughter dance. Um, we have about 375 to 400 people attend that, and that raises about $4,000. Um, the following year, we'll have a, a mommy son. Um, we do a shoot for a cure night. Um, my niece plays basketball, and so at, at their high school, the boys' team has a shoot for a cure night. They, the, the whole team wears a CF shirt, and it's a different shirt. It's not the walk shirt, so it has to be another shirt that the whole school wants to buy also. <laughs> Um, and just individual walkers just come to us with ideas. Um, one of ours, I don't know if anyone has seen the um, bravelets. They are, I'm wearing one of them now. That it's a necklace or bracelets. It just says, be brave. And you can enter any organization on there. And because we're a nonprofit, she entered Breathe for Olivia. And whatever we sold, I, I think we raised like $350. But she organized it all herself. We didn't have to do anything. Um, and that's what we like, that we don't have to do anything. We like when our walkers come to us with ideas. And um, there's a lot that come to us with, they want to do pampered shaft, Tupperware, jewelry parties, um, just so that they can, they can be involved and, and they want to fundraise. Because they, they do come and see the work that we do, so it inspires them to, to do something as well. Um, so we, we try to come up with events that will, will pique the interest of all of our different walkers so that when they they come and attend or come and help out with the ham and cheese sandwich sale then like I said we in turn turn around and give to their walk accounts so that it so that everybody has that we always make sure everybody has minimum hundred dollars in their account um, so is this a lot of work for us yes but um, I made a promise to my sister-in-law and to my niece that I wouldn't stop until there was a cure and um, it, ma it makes it worth it. And to be honest, like our, every single event that we have, it just gives me more and more inspiration and to see all of our community continue to show up year after year and that we sell out event after event. And, and like before the peanut butter eggs are even made, they're like, where are the peanut butter eggs? Like, <laughs> you know, it's just, and what, are the, what color are the shirts this year? And, you know, it's just, it's very inspiring. So thank you.
I'm like overwhelmed by everything she just said. I don't even know how you do all that. That's amazing. Wow. I th- I have two teenagers, and I I I think that it's so cool that you get Olivia's whole school involved. I mean, that has to be spectacular for her to feel that support. I think that's amazing. That's amazing. You're amazing. So cool. Thank you, Corey. Your turn. So. You got a lot going on too. You got two kids with CF, first of all. I feel you. I feel you. Um, and they're little. <laughs> That's hard too. And still, you managed to raise a lot of money and get all of your walkers activated and fundraising. So, how do you do that? It, it's really, it really has nothing to do with me. It has probably more to do with my wife than anything. But if I could just real quick, could you put me on the list for one of those peanut butter jars? <laughs> I know. I'm starving. I, right I want the jar because I want the pizza party. <laughs> just, okay. You got it. Okay. You got it. Um, we a, a little disclaimer there too. There's a number. We have a number of families that that come and walk with us. Um, so a bunch of little kids, and so a lot of those a lot of those youngins they get donations from mom and dad, and and so it's not uh, they're not out there fundraising necessarily, but. Um, we try to make sure that everybody on our team, you know, has, has contributed in some way, shape, or form and has money next to their name just so people come to our page. They can see that there are a number of people that are you know, hopefully generating more momentum and, and, uh, and more donations just from the fact that there are you know, so many people on the, hopefully so many people on the page that have money next to their name. So we, um, we do have two kiddos, Graham and, uh, Laney and Graham are nine and six, and then Connor, who's five. Um, we got diagnosed when Laney was eight. Uh, eight months old. I'm sorry, eight weeks old, <clears throat> and um, we were uh, that was she was born in December, and so we found out shortly before Great Strides of 2008, and so we've been kind of gung ho with Great Strides ever since then. Jen's like a lot of moms. She instantaneously, I think, on the way home from that appointment where we were diagnosed, um, was not was on Google, not googling cystic fibrosis, but googling how we're going to raise money to beat this thing. And um, I'm still a little bit in shock, trying to watch for traffic lights, make sure we're not running red lights, things of that nature. And she's just like, she's gung ho. Let's get in touch with the foundation. Foundation's calling us. And so this will be year 10 for us, um, for having our team. And uh, we got more energized when Graham was born a few years later. Um, But we, um, you know, it's amazing to hear some of the stories. and, And I feel like, I mean, I hate going last because so many of these great ideas and so many of these families are doing such incredible things. We, um, we kind of go through, and in, in, in all honesty, we kind of go through periods of, um, you know, we're real gung-ho and we're fired up. And we've had years where we've raised $30,000 and we've had years where we've raised fifteen, And, um, and so it's a, it, we're in a, kind of this constant state of flux of motivation at times. And a lot of it just has to do with what we have on our plates. Um, but we've tried over the years to kind of come up with some different ideas, some different creative ideas that we can use to, you know, pad that, that fundraising sum. And, um, you know, initially we were, I, I'm, I'm a dentist by trade, and so I was thinking about ways that I could utilize the office to be able to help with that. And so initially we started with um, kind of a day of giving back to CF through the office. We'd kind of blast out to all of our patients that we were going to be, you know, all the treatment that we, you know, performed that day for them, all of that money was going to go directly to the CF Foundation, um, which generated a lot of buzz within the office and a lot of awareness, which was great, um, and, uh, and, and filled the books. I mean, we had, you know, we, we extended our day and, and had patients coming in from 7 in the morning until 7 at night, and it was a really cool deal. The, the staff were, would donate their time, and it was really neat, and, and things kind of changed over, we had that, we did that for a couple of years, three years, and then things kind of changed at the office. The office was growing, and, and so we weren't, um, we weren't really able to continue doing that in the same way that we were at that point in time, so then we had to kind of shift gears and think about other ways that we were going to raise money, and so we have, you know, Jen and her mom and, and her, her friends and um, other family members of ours are really crafty and creative and so for a number of years there they were creating um you know handmade uh, whatever you can imagine all kinds of handmade gifts and either um selling them out outright or or raffling them off for us or a number of different things just to to bring money in jen painted easter baskets one year and sold personalized easter baskets um you know blasted it out through facebook and her mom embroidered 
you know, personalized things for, for uh, folks through, you know, Great Shirt, announced through Great Strides that it was money was coming in for Great Strides and, and personalized embroidered things and sent them out to people. And um, so that was one way we kind of stemmed the tide for a little while. Um, the, um, we tried to do little things like spirit night at local restaurants for our kiddos. Um, so announce them at school, you know, come to Chick-fil-A or, you know, all these other restaurants that will do those spirit nights. And we raised some little bit of money through doing those and having, you know, classmates come out, and, which is really neat to hear because, you know, classmates are, I mean, they just, you know, kids have those relationships that are just fun to see. And, and the kids, they... You know, they, they see each other struggling with something and they just they want to get involved. Like, I wish we had, you know, the ability to just commit like they do. But it's neat to see their friends come out and, and, uh, and just want to participate and help because now they know that their little buddy is struggling with something that they had no idea about initially. So it was kind of cool to see that. And through all this, we're raising awareness. We've got a team member on our, our team member that's been with us the entire time that's a, a sister of my... Uh, my, my sister's husband's sister, so a brother-in-law's sister that's a teacher, um, teaches a marketing class in high school, and she, on her own, just decided that through their class, they were going to, CF was going to be their thing, and she was teaching them marketing concepts and how to go out and sell things and brand products, and so they would make t-shirts and buttons and sell food, and they were doing it all through their own, their own high school, completely... Um, you know, devoid of any help from us, and they would raise two or three thousand dollars a year. This high school class would, um, which was incredible to see, and that was all just a you know a connection through a connection that you know she kind of picked it up and, and ran with it on her own. Um, we we used utilized passion fundraising a couple of times for Connor's birthday. Um, which, when he was young enough to not know that he wasn't getting presents, we would uh, <laughs> we would we would do passion fundraising. So instead of giving Connor a present, you know, please donate to it for his birthday to CF, um, and he'd do a little video, you know, like Ryan was talking about. Uh, different from Ryan, when Shep does his videos, and Ryan's become a good buddy of mine through CF, but uh, Shep typically doesn't wear a shirt, so <laughs> we typically will dress Connor fully whenever he does his videos. But, <laughs> But that, from, might be from Missis- that might be a Mississippi <laughs> thing. Uh, You're lucky he has his pants on. <laughs> he will have his boots on. Though, Vide- videos are from here up usually. But uh, we uh, so we did passion fundraising for that. Um, but the last two years have been, you know, uh, we've been coming for four years now. I think to VLC and Jennifer always gets really, fi- and I do too. But Jennifer really gets fired up. And two years ago, she had an idea that. She wanted to do something similar to what Ryan talked about, and that's to create an event in town that was very family friendly, um, that was, you know, during the day, just come out, hang out, kind of, you know, wash CF over people throughout the day, but let them have a good time doing something else. And um, her brainchild was Touch a Truck. And Touch a Truck is an event that we're going to have in October again for our third year. We raised $10,000 the first year, $20,000 last year. Um, hopefully we'll get somewhere close to 30 or 40 this year if we can really get, you know, hammering on some corporate sponsorships. But it's just an opportunity for kids in the community to come out and crawl around on vehicles, fire trucks, police cars, um, you know, dump trucks, garbage trucks, construction vehicles. And we get helicopters come out and in the middle of the event will come in and land and the kids get to see that and then they get to climb in the helicopter and then it takes off later on in the day. and. I mean, the, the, what's really been neat to see is that, like they had mentioned too, and like everybody's mentioned, the community really starts to just rally around that cause. I mean, it's a, it may be a neat event that you kind of got started, but um, they just, um, it, it's, it's, it's been incredible when, you know, you ask somebody specifically to help and they're really dialed into it, and then they ask five or ten other people because they've got those connections that you don't have. And um, so we've been utilizing Touch a Truck to kind of, to kind of continue to boost from there and, and hopefully one day it'll get big enough that we'll just kind of spin it off and into its own event and continue to do great strides the way we always have been. Um, but right now it's, it's kind of supporting great strides for us too. But that's kind of the last thing that, um, that we've done. And then this year we've talked a little bit about wanting to expand. I think our next expansion will try to be into a national team and taking some of those folks from outside, out of town that, um, that have come and walked with us and supported us for the last few years 
and just asking them to, we have not made the ask of them, and that's a fault of our own, I think. We haven't made the ask of them to start their own teams. And my sister's in Austin, and we've got friends in Houston, and uh, friends in Arkansas, and, and they all come to, to walk with us. And, and I think we're going we're gonna to be a little rude this year, and we're going to, maybe not this year, or next year, we're going to be a little rude and ask them to stay home and tell them, <laughs> you know, walk in, walk, walk in your own city, and, uh, and we'll see how that goes. So, anyways, thank you. That is amazing. I think um, all of us, we, we all have a few more minutes, but I want to say that these are such great examples of, you know, we're all doing great strides, but you're doing it in the way that works for you, right? So letter write, writing campaigns are awesome, and they work. They do. But a lot of times, as you are in it for a little while, you have to evolve and start coming up with these fun, cool ideas that work for you, that work for your family, work for your community, and you all are amazing examples of doing exactly that. So thank you for sharing. We have um, about five minutes to go, and I'm hoping this is gonna be good, but... Okay, I still don't see anything. Um, yes, let's take a question from the audience. Does anybody here use Booster.com for their t-shirt orders? Just very few? Okay, if you don't use Booster.com, it is so easy. It's kind of through custom ink. And basically, you can go in, create your own design. Um, you can have several different shirts, tanks, racerback tanks, short sleeve, long sleeve. You're allowed to pick several different ones for your campaign. Um, we've probably done it for our team the past maybe three years. It makes it so very easy because when they go to order, your team, your family, whomever, probably would be a cool thing for national teams as well. Um, they pay for it online, so you do not have to absorb the cost. You do not have to have somebody to write it off. Um, so they can even pay an extra $5 and have it shipped to them if they're somewhere else and you don't want to get, you can't get the shirt to them. So what happens is, say the raw cost that Booster.com is charging is $7, um, but your whomever's purchasing the shirt pays 20, well, that money's going to go to CF. And what they do is they offer you a link to put your URL in, your Great Strides URL. So when your campaign closes for that particular shirt um, that you've ordered or you know your campaign that you've created, they do a direct deposit to Great Strides URL. And it's, I want to say last year, it was maybe six, $900. I can't remember exactly. Um, we didn't have to fool with the t-shirts, we didn't have to deliver them, we did not have to collect the money for them. It was very easy. So if you've not used Booster.com, I highly recommend checking it out for your t-shirts for the wall. Thank you so much. I have never heard of that. That's awesome. Awesome. That's very cool. That is a lot of hassle. Question for Corey. I love the idea of touch a truck. How do you monetize that? So the the first year we did it, um, we we did we're basically promoting it through social media. Um, we charge five dollars per person, uh, uh, kids ages two and under free. Um, so everybody that comes through the door basically pays five bucks. We've got um, food trucks out there, um, and they've all agreed to give a percentage of of what they sell that day um, to the back to the foundation or back to touch a truck. Um, so we don't have to mess with food and providing food and things of that nature. The event typically runs from about, t we, we play with the times a little bit, but typically runs from about 10 to 3 or 10.30 to 3.30. Um, and so we've been, the first year was pretty much all ticket sales. We didn't have a lot of people that wanted to sponsor us because we had no product to show them. Last year we had a couple of uh, sponsors come in at the $2,500 level. Um, and then this year, hopefully, we're going to get them to commit a little bit more. So I think moving forward into the future, the the, the big dollars are going to come from just you know creating a product that that people are or that co companies are happy to get behind and and provide sponsorship dollars for, um, as opposed to just getting bodies through. Because we, we were we were relative. I would say we were relatively. The, the traffic of people coming through this year was relatively steady. It's not that we couldn't have more people out there. We've got a great venue that has plenty of space. But, um, you know, if we had another 1,000 people out there that came out during that day, I think, you know, 3,000 people coming through would be great. And, and then it would be corporate dollars from there moving forward. 
I, uh, yeah, one more quick one. And I'm sorry to take the microphone twice, but uh, this is for Ryan. Um, and I think this is, I guess, could be for anyone who has young children. We started fundraising kind of like you did when Eric was three years old. And he came up with his own trikathon. <laughs> and he went to his kindergarten teachers and went to all the parents. He made the flyers himself with a little help on how to write. That's awesome. And raised money for CF. And that's all he said. And they put a big pickle jar up in the front. And, you know, word spread with the parents. And that one little event with, and they set up a, like a course in the middle of the parking lot. And they brought their three-wheelers and they rode around in circles. <laughs> they raised $10,000, a bunch God. of three-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew, you know? But the older that your kids get, for me, the harder it's been to find things that are age appropriate for the group that fundraises for me. And so we've done one uh, in our backyard called Moonlight Martinis for Cystic Fibrosis. And uh, in two hours, we raised $5,000. So, but don't ever think there's not another idea out there that won't work for whatever group you have. And um, like I just met these people here that are in the Dallas area that I didn't know, and now we're gonna I'm gonna help him and and um, work early in the year before the event to raise money. Don't wait until the end. Um, we haven't even gotten to our event yet, and we're already up to eighty four thousand for this year. So I. You know, and it's, it's not about me, it's about, it's about all of us, it's about all of you, it's about your children, your grandchildren, and coming up with weird ideas. I'll wake up in the middle of the night and come up with some bizarre way to raise money, and I'll write it down, because the older I get, the more I forget, you know. <laughs> And, uh, but we're all here for the right reason, and I'm so glad to see so many in here for great strides. So, um, we thought we had plenty of time having 90 minutes instead of 45, but we're already out of time. That just flew so fast. We have so many good questions coming in, too, and sorry um, for those of you who sent questions. We didn't get to them, but we are up our time is over so thank you all you panelists so much and uh 41 million y'all go start raising